वेलकम बैक डियर स्टूडेंट्स फॉर टूडे सेशन ऑन एनिमल किंगडम वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व नीट ऑब्जेक्टिव क्वेश्चन सो दिस इज द पार्ट वन सो द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन वी हैव हियर इज इन अकाइनोडोमेटा फर्टिलाइजेशन इज यूजली सो द फोर ऑप्शन हैव बीन गिवन एक्सटर्नल इंटरनल बोथ एंड नन let me tell you first and foremost important thing for us to understand is that so what do we mean by the fertilization see here fertilization is a process where there is fusion of male and female okay gametes all right so that is what we call it can be either external or it can be internal external fertilization means the fertilization which occurs outside the female body internal fertilization occurs to the fertilization occurring inside the female body okay so here yeah, let us say for example we have the male gamete sperm for example here so the sperm fuses with the you know egg right and forms the zygote okay so this requires the fertilization process to occur okay either it can be outside the female body or inside the female body so the question has this with respect to echinodermata so we know that echinoderms are spiny skinned animals there are spines arising from their body okay so they are generally marine and here fertilization is external let me tell you okay few important aspects about internal fertilization as well see when we consider the internal fertilization the survival rate is very high even though the offspring which are produced are very few all right but in case of external fertilization production of offspring is very high and survival rate is not as effective as compared to internal fertilization okay so the examples for internal fertilization are say for example in the mammals all right we can find the best example all right to go with that even in cartilaginous fishes we can find and even okay reptiles also show internal fertilization these are few examples which you can take which will be useful for you for solving further questions okay so answer is 1 so moving on to the second question we have in echinoderms the excretory system is four options have been given malphigian tubules nephridia proboscis gland and none so again in case of echinoderms the question is okay so which are spiny skinned animals so we need to understand about their excretory system so let us understand each option now here first the option which is given is malphigian tubules see malphigian tubules is excretory organ in case of insects all right in case of myriapods and we have arachnids having this as the excretory organ okay so these are few examples we can consider then with respect to nephridia nephridia is excretory organ in invertebrate animals so like for example we have annelids all right which have nephridia as the excretory organ arthropods also have to go with even molluscans all right so coming to proboscis gland this proboscis gland no it is a excretory organ in hemicordates 
which is a non chordate phylum before it was referred to as a chordate phylum but okay now it is considered as uh, you know a non chordate phylum all right there we can find proboscis gland as the excretory organ all right so let me tell you dear students here in case of echinoderms excretory system is generally not present the kidneys or other excretory you know structures are absent here so they have a process uh, called you know diffusion okay through which excretion occurs they don't have any excretory system but diffusion through diffusion generally they release out the ammonia gas all right so this is what generally we can find with respect to the echinoderms so we can say that echinoderms don't have malpighian tubules nephridia or either proboscis gland okay so please go for option 4 that is none dear students moving on to the third question we have larva of the echinoderm is see four options have been given let us understand each one of them okay so here the question is with respect to the spiny skin animals that is the echinoderms again so first option is sessile so this is with reference to larva so if it is like a sessile refers to something which is fixed in one place all right or which is something you know which can be referred to as immobile so this is not the option with respect to the echinoderms they are marine organisms and they are uh, their larva is free swimming it uh, you know freely dwells in the ocean all right so the free swimming larva is the correct option see they show various types of larvae let me give you a few examples see they have larvae called bipinaria all right or let me say auricularia all right is also a larva of echinoderms all right to go with that even few more let me give you for example doliolaria all right so this is also the option you know with respect to the development indirect development we find in the echinoderm so they have larvae all right so the uh, c you know the fourth option they have given development is direct no we don't find direct development indirect because here bipinaria auricularia doliolaria all these you know larvae are produced all right so larvae is found here okay so when larvae is found we generally say indirect development so option 4 is also wrong so as they have given uh, three both one and two okay so generally it is not okay they the larvae of echinoderms the spiny skin animals is only free swimming okay note that point so go for option 2 fourth question we have is dissection of the rat is done from this which side okay they have given four options the first is dorsal the first option they have given is dorsal to go with ventral anterior and lateral all right so here let me tell you first of all what do we mean by dissection see in simple terms let me tell you dear students dissection means here cutting okay all right what to cut here it can be a plant part all right or any other body part of the animal that is what we call it as dissection all right so or the organism itself so the dissection of the rat they have asked okay which is a, a rodent okay so we generally do it from you know the ventral side ventral here refers to front portion of the body it is front portion of the body so in case of rat let us say this is the organism okay so here this is the okay ventral side this is the front portion this is the dorsal side this is the back portion all right so it is done from the ventral part of the body all right it is not from the dorsal side in case of 
rat okay dorsal ear refers to back side as i said you ventral refers to the front side anterior the top end okay of the body or lateral the sides of the body so please go for option 2 that is ventral from the front side the dissection of the rat is done moving on next question we have here is an egg laying mammal is okay four options have been given kangaroo platypus koala and whale see dear students first of all understand that egg laying organisms are or the animals are referred to as oviparous animals all right this is with respect to egg laying animals and which give direct birth to young ones the animals you know are referred to as viviparous animals okay so now let us understand out of these four options there is one organism which is egg laying all right first the option is kangaroo so kangaroo as we all know is a marsupial it is a marsupial that means you know it bases its offspring in the pouch which is present in the ventral side of its body okay so it is considered as a marsupial not only kangaroo let me give you one more example we also have few more example like wallaby okay and many other examples fine so which is not egg laying mammal kangaroo is a viviparous animal so it give direct birth to young one so option 1 is the not the one okay secondly we have platypus okay so when we consider platypus okay it is a mammal okay definitely it is a mammal all right so in fact all the mammals most of the mammals are viviparous that means they directly give birth to young ones all right but few exceptions are there like for example as i said you here we have platypus even though it is a mammal all right it lays egg all right so platypus to go with even one more example in case of mammals we have is echidna see echidna or spiny ant eater we say so this echidna also is a you know oviparous animal or mammal all right so option 2 here is correct but let us also understand the other options see they have given the third option as koala okay so here koala refers to all right the organism all right or the arboreal animal all right arboreal herbivorous animal okay arboreal refers to the animal which generally survives on trees okay herbivorous uh, and in fact let me tell you it is also a marsupial which can be seen in the you know regions of australia all right so koala is also viviparous it is not oviparous or egg laying okay so that option is also you know we have to eliminate anyway fourth option we are very well aware of it whale okay this option you know let me tell you when we consider whale whale is the aquatic mammal all right which also gives birth directly to you know uh, in, uh, gives birth directly okay so let us not consider whale okay because it is a viviparous animal so we have to go for the only option which is given here is platypus okay so option is 2 dear students the next question is gambusia is all right let us understand that gambusia is a viviparous fish all right so that means it give direct birth to young ones all right so first aspect and secondly let me tell you it is present in fresh water all right so next let me tell you that commonly we call this fish as all right this is a fish which we commonly call it to as the mosquito fish all right mosquito fish or even you know we also refer it to as gambesi all right so these are the two names with which it is well familiar with okay 
so when it is introduced in ponds all right it helps in you know controlling mosquito larvae it controls the you know mosquito larvae all right that's where you know it is it is useful to control so many diseases which spread through you know mosquitoes where mosquito acts as a vector no so it eats up the mosquito of the larvae if it is introduced in ponds so that you know diseases are not spread so please understand this okay so furthermore dear students it is generally invasive okay wherever it survives it becomes invasive here invasive means to say that you know they threaten all right the local species wherever they are introduced they cause or you know threaten damage to the species all right they kill the other species all right or they reduce the population of the other species okay that's what we use it i am using the term here as invasive all right but let me tell you that gambusia is very advantageous to control the mosquito larvae it is a fish predator all right it uh, you know predates on to the mosquito larvae so go for option 3 all right it is not parasitic or either you know pest of fish it is the predator of mosquito larvae okay so fourth option which is given is a mosquito spreading yellow fever it is not a mosquito it is a fish okay so the correct option here is 3 The seventh question is: Circulatory system is first completed in which phylum? Okay, so four options have been given: Arthropoda, Annelida, Platyhelminthes, and Ascelminthes. Dear students, you know, please look into the point. First completed in which phylum? Okay, all the phylums which have been mentioned here are the invertebrate phylums. Okay. so first it is completed in annelida okay option 2 is correct it starts from annelida the circulatory system that to complete circulatory system we can find there of course arthropods also have but when we compare both these okay it gets completed in the annelids first okay so go for the option 2 see in case of platyhelminthes and ascelminthes circulatory system is generally not present so then how does here circulation occurs generally see or the gaseous exchange occur in case of platyhelminthes organisms even though the circulatory system is absent they in fact you know diffuse oxygen you know all right they diffuse oxygen via their skin all right so through their skin you know they diffuse the oxygen even though the circulatory system is absent all right this is with respect to platyhelminthes and with respect to ascelminthes you know the gaseous exchange here occurs through the you know diffusion again all right diffusion only here diffusion helps in the exchange of gases which occurs here also through the body surface in case of ascelminthes so without doubt we can eliminate two options easily platyhelminthes and ascelminthes out of these two options annelid and arthropods which have circulatory system but it is very well formed for the first time okay for first completed in the annelids go for option 2 dear students eighth question we have is organisms which are floating on the surface of water are you know so we have to select among the four options you know what the organisms are referred to as if they float on the surface of water okay let us go from the option 1 first is benthos here benthos refers to you know the flora or the fauna okay flora and fauna all right that means the plants and the animals okay which are dwelling at the bottom or present at the bottom of we can say either sea or lake if that is the case we call that to as benthos so that is not the option the option as you know the question as here is the organisms which float on the surface of water so benthos are the organisms which uh, in fact can be seen at the bottom of the sea or lake okay so option 1 is eliminated here next let us move on to option 2 we have planktons you know these planktons 
or again also many wide collection of organisms you know they live in very large bodies of water okay so they live in large bodies of water so here we can say that they are unable to swim against current they are in fact floating they don't move against the current but they are generally floating on the surface of water okay so option 2 is the one okay next let us also understand what we mean by nectons see nectons here refers to the organisms all right which actively swim you know they are aquatic organisms rather you know these organisms very actively swim in a body of water like say for example nectons are examples like we have fish okay let us consider squid okay which is a nectarn all right or for example octopus all right then sharks all right or in many other marine animals all right so they are called nectarns and option 4 which is given is both 2 and 3 okay so here the answer should be both 2 and 3 because the organism planktons as well as the nectarns okay have the ability to float on the surface of water so please go for option 4 how many species of animals have been described till now please understand the question as this now on the earth okay how many species are described that is the question okay so let me tell you the options given here are less than 1.5 million okay then 1.5 to 1.8 million you know more than 1.8 million or less than 1 million okay let me tell you there was a study which was uh, you know conducted in 2011 which predicted that there might be around 8.7 all right so 8.7 million species on the earth they are told okay the expectation prediction this is so 8.7 total species might be there okay on the earth and among that we have identified 1.6 million okay we have identified we have discovered around 1.6 million all right so among 1.6 million the clearly described organisms are 1 million all right so please go for option 4 the next question we have is incomplete digestive system is found in so dear students first of all let us understand what do we mean by incomplete digestive system see incomplete digestive system is where you know we don't find the starting of the digestive system from the mouth and ending with the anus here generally there will be only one opening all right through through which both ingestion and digestion occurs so ingestion the intake of food materials digestion all right that is excretion of material both occurs through a single opening that is what we call incomplete digestive system all right complete digestive system is where we can find all right the digestive system starting from the mouth all right and ending with the anus all right so here we have two openings generally okay starts from the mouth ends with the anus all right that is complete digestive system right children okay now let me tell you the options here you know among the four options we have one option which shows incomplete digestion and the other three options show complete digestion so let me tell you first we have arthropod see arthropods have complete digestion okay so they have two openings the mouth and the anus through which you know the entry and the exit of you know uh, the material takes place annelids annelids here are in fact let me tell you they also have complete digestive system okay 
So that means there are also two openings, mouth and anus are present. Clearly distinguishable it is. Okay. Then the third option is platyhelminthus. Platyhelminthus organisms have incomplete digestion. They have incomplete digestion. Digestion is not complete here. Okay. So generally one opening will be present through which both ingestion and digestion has to occur. Next we have ascalminthus. So ascalminthus also shows the complete digestion. Okay. So let me tell you now here among the four options given the arthropods, annelids and platyhelminthus organisms you know sorry ascalminthus organisms show complete digestion except the platyhelminthus organism which shows incomplete digestion. So please go for you know option 3. Okay option 3 is the right answer. 11th question we have is digestive system is first completed in which phylum? Four options have been given. Arthropod is the first option. Okay. So, here. Okay. Then second, annelid. We have platyhelminthus uh, as the third option and ascalminthus as the fourth option. Dear students, first of all, let us understand what do you mean by here. Digestive system is first completed. That means, see, all these are invertebrate phylums which have been given. So, among these phylums, the complete digestive system starting from the mouth ending with the anus the ingestion should take place through the mouth and the ejection should take place all right or the metabolic waste should move outside the body through the other opening that is anus so this can be seen all right for the first time in the invertebrate phylum that is ascalminthus all right so see arthropods and annelids here let me give you these two options see they have well developed digestive system that means their digestive system starts with the mouth and ends with the anus but it is formed after ascalminthus so those options are eliminated all right then we have the third option here that is platyhelminthus so it is a bit different here so it is before ascalminthus but still let me tell you they in fact uh, when we consider the, uh, the platyhelminthus organisms they have incomplete digestive system. Alright. That means they have a single opening through which both the ingestion and the ejection occurs. And let me tell you dear students what is the reason because you know when you consider there in fact uh, the uh, flat, dorsoventrally flattened body because they lack body cavity. They don't have body cavity. Okay their body is dorso ventrally flattened and in fact let me tell you they are acylomates alright so the so accommodating a good digestive system is uh, not possible here okay so platyhelminthus organisms they, they have incomplete digestive system and all the other three have complete digestive system but among arthropod annelid and ascalminthus the correct option we have to go for is option 4 that is ascalminthus. Next 12th question. Heart to pump blood evolved for the first time in. You know. So the circulatory system should possess an important you know pumping organ called heart. So again 4 invertebrate phylums have been given. So among these 4 phylums heart evolved for the first time. In which phylum we need to identify. Alright. Let us now come from the last option here. Okay. First we have your fourth option as flat worms or the platyhelminthus organisms. They lack circulatory system. They don't have the circulatory system itself. Alright. In case of flat worms. It is absent. So here so diffusion of oxygen occurs via the skin. Okay. There is diffusion which helps in the you know oxygen intake all right through skin here second option we have all right the round worms all right when we consider round worms circulatory system here also it is absent circulatory system is not present even in the case of round worms all right then moving on to the other two options arthropods and annelids dear students both this possess heart to pump blood. Both these uh, you know phylums 
invertebrate phylums possess hard to pump blood but we need to identify among these two now okay which of these two you know are the phylums where hard to pump blood evolved first when you compare these two annelids you know are the phylums where hard evolved for the first time you know to pump blood okay so even though arthropods have you know hard to pump blood but uh, and arthropods are placed after annelids and uh, annelids uh, you know uh, as they are placed before arthropods invertebrate phylum it is considered that annelids uh, you know have had you know the heart you know or the first time the heart to pump blood was evolved in annelids go for option 1 13th question we have is segmentation is present in see when we talk about segmentation dear students let me tell you segmentation can also be called to as metamerism all right so where the body externally and internally all right in both external as well as internal okay parts of body will have are divided into segments segments you can say or you can also refer that to as metamers all right so this is what we call you know the segmentation or metamerism as okay now let us understand among the four given options here see first option given is we have annelid okay annelida the phylum invertebrate phylum annelida first of all let me tell you dear students the question as this segmentation is present in they are not asking you know the segmented organisms found in which phylum you know complete segmentation proper segmentation is present in annelids okay it is uh, the segmented uh, organisms having phylum almost all the organisms so like for example let me tell you in case of the annelids we have earthworm all right or let us say for example we have leech or many other polychaetes all right which all have you know the segmentation all right now let me tell you that Uh, you know uh, of course now we can say that uh, annelida has segmentation correct now moving on to arthropod it's very important to understand here okay when we consider the arthropod segmentation no you know can be seen in body you know their body wall all right and their nervous system as well okay we can find the segmentation okay and their excretory organs you know kidneys also show segmentations to go with muscles all right and the body cavity as well they have segmentation so remember the arthropods the organisms which have exoskeletal body all right so they there we can find body wall nervous system kidneys muscles and body cavity has segmentation all right so yes segmentation is present even in arthropods all right then moving on to the next option that is chordate when we consider the chordate all right so chordates especially the vertebrates when we consider under the chordates you know let me tell you that you know segmentation is present here as well okay where do we find okay in the vertebrae of backbone we can find all right vertebrae of backbone there is segmentation in case of chordates all right and at a very fine scale okay we can find even in case of muscles all right and also nerves all right so backbone vertebrae muscles and nerves okay have segmentation in case of chordates all right under vertebrates so yes segmentation is present now in annelids arthropods and chordates so it is obvious that we have to go for option 
option 4 is the right answer next which is absent in leech see here leech first of all understand dear students you know belongs to a phylum you know that is annelida right so here so among these four options which we do not find in leech we have to select okay so let us come from the fourth option again so first here it is mentioned as salivary glands see salivary glands are present in leech they have the digestive system which has the salivary gland which secretes the saliva important for the digestive process so they have salivary glands so next we have clitellum okay so here clitellum see it is present in okay earthworm as well earthworm also you can find and also you can find it in leech okay so here what is the role of this clitellum clitellum helps in formation of egg case right that is the role in case of earthworm and leech uh, in general then we have ocelli okay what are ocelli see it is another term for simple eye see we can say this as the another term for simple okay eye all right so now let me tell you it can also be called to as eye spot it has in it many sensory cells you know which help in you know in fact detecting movement all right so these ocelli are also present in leech okay so salivary glands clitellum and ocelli all are present the only one which is absent in leech is parapodia so parapodia as we all know are the appendages they are the appendages which we can find okay which in case of many organisms which help in locomotion respiration and so on okay so which is absent in leech so we have to select the option which uh, you know uh, where leech does not have a particular structure out of these four so go for option that is one parapodia that is the right answer 15th question we have here is lack of nematocysts or nidoblasts lack of they are asking that these nematocysts or nidoblasts uh, are absent then presence of colloblast and biradial symmetry okay is the characteristic of which of these you know given options we have to know okay first of all let us understand what do we mean by nidoblast and where it is found see these nematocysts or nidoblasts are the specialized cells okay they are present in the tentacles of all right jellyfish all right so this is a characteristic feature of cilentrate okay so this is the first point you remember okay and generally it is you know uh, present in cilentrate this is the more important point because we are talking here with reference to which organisms you know lack nematocysts okay so they are present in cilentrates okay but let me tell you here they are absent in tenophora the, this is the phylum okay they are absent in the phylum tenophora tenoplena and cenoplena or bero they are the examples for the you know phylum tenophora so all these do not show nematocysts or nidoblasts okay they are present in the cilentrates not in the tenophores so that's the first aspect let us understand secondly what are colloblasts see these are also specialized cells okay which are present in tentacles of tenophores all right so this is one okay they also help in capturing prey all right then we have biradial symmetry so all we know that if an organism can be divided into two equal halves from the plane passing through the center then we call that as biradial symmetry 
सो लैक और द एब्सेंस ऑफ नेमेटोसिस और निडोप्लास एंड प्रेजेंस ऑफ कोलोब्लास हैविंग बाइलेट्रल सिमेट्री कैन बी सीन इन ऑल दिस यू नो सो टिनोप्लेना एंड सीलोप्लेना आर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ टिनोफोरा सो आंसर इज ऑल ऑफ द एब इन आर्थ्रोपोर्ट्स द बैलेंसिंग ऑर्गेन इज रेडुला रेटिकुलोसाइट स्टैटोसिस्ट एंड एंटेन आर दि गिवन ऑप्शन डियर स्टूडेंट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट मी टेल यू दैट आर्थ्रोपोर्ट्स आर द ऑर्गेनिजम्स वेर वी कैन फाइंड हार्ड एक्जो स्केलेटस बॉडी कवरिंग दैम ओके सो फर्स्ट लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट रेडुला ओके सी वॉट इज रेडुला हिया सी इट इज अ स्ट्रक्चर विच इज प्रेजेंट इन मोलस्क और मोलस्कंस ऑल राइट एंड इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर फीडिंग राइट सो इट इज जनरली कंपेर्ड एज यू नो सिमिलर टू टंग ऑल राइट सो दिस आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड दिस पॉइंट रेडुला इज प्रेजेंट इन मोलस्कंस और मोलस it is uh, you know important for feeding all right so here let me tell you it helps in cutting of uh, you know food before the food enters the esophagus all right next let us understand about the reticulocyte here what are reticulocytes see these are immature red blood cells immature red blood corpuscles okay fine so let me tell you that reticulocytes develop and mature generally in the bone marrow all right they form in the bone marrow they develop in the bone marrow itself and then they are in fact circulated in the body all right or the blood stream correct so this is what we call reticulocytes next dear students let us also know about the statocyst see statocyst is a balance sensory receptor right it helps in balancing okay so this statocyst is present in many aquatic invertebrates like it can be present in molluscans or mollusks all right and it can also be seen in nidarians all right and to go with them even echinoderms also have the stato the sensory receptors okay help in uh, maintaining the body equilibrium or body balance even in case of uh, cephalopods we can find okay uh, as well as in some crustaceans we can find this stato cyst all right then we have antennae here so what is antennae what is the role of antennae see antennae they are generally in pairs and they are long and thin sensory structures they help as you know sensory structures all right why they are important you know they are important for sensing for example they are present in insects okay so crustaceans as well right and many other arthropods you can find this and they are important for detecting and also in so many sensory functions right so now the given question is in arthropod the balancing organ is all right so balancing organ we are talking about see balancing which helps in balancing body equilibrium to maintain which helps all right i have told all the functions among that we know that statocyst helps in balancing or body equilibrium so go for option 3 moving on to the 17th question in mollusk body is covered with external skeleton made up of okay so here we are talking with reference to the mollusk all right the soft bodied animals right here yes the body is protected by hard shell all right which is made up of calcium carbonate okay so remember this and let me tell you option 3 is correct okay 
say spongin fibers or chitin or calcium silicate we don't find but let me tell you we also have hard exoskeleton in arthropods which is an important characteristics which we can find there so here it is made up of chitin the exoskeleton is formed of chitin okay it's a polysaccharide all right children see spongin fibers we don't find in mollusk but spongin fibers can be seen okay in case of poriferance all right so they are not present in mollusk they are present in poriferance and let me tell you they are fibrous skeletons we, gen we generally call them as fibrous skeletons okay so then all right so these are the few important uh, aspects so calcium silicate generally uh, you know does not form as much you know exoskeleton but we can find spongin fibers in poriferans the exoskeleton in case of arthropods is made up of chitin and it is calcium carbonate in mollus so please go for the option you know 3 that is calcium carbonate which can be seen with respect to the exoskeleton or the external skeleton of mollus enterocoelom is found in so see there are four options protostomia deuterostomia both one and two none of the above so now let me tell you few important aspects here dear students see when we consider the true coelom the true body cavity when we consider okay so it is in fact divided into or categorized into two types the first we call it to as schizocoelom all right and secondly we call that to as the enterocoelom all right so remember that the true body cavity having organisms has two types okay of true coelom either uh, schizocoelom or enterocoelom okay now let us understand that based on their true body cavity okay that is first let us understand schizocoelom all right see schizocoelom can be seen with respect to annelids mollusks and arthropods annelids all right then we have mollusks and then to go with mollusks we have arthropods all right these three show schizocoelom so which is formed by mesodermal spit okay so mesoderm we know that it is the middle primary germ layer when it splits all right there is formation of schizocoelom okay now let us move on to the enterocoelom here which is given in the question as well see what is this this arises from an outward growth all right in embryonic gut all right in the embryo or embryonic gut we can find an outgrowth all right that outgrowth is called as enterocoelom it's a type of true coelom all right so now let us understand that enterocoelom is present in which organisms is a question first they have given protostomia see what are protostomia you know what are these organisms proto means here first all right and stoma here refers to mouth all right that means to say you know that there is a you know in fact we call that as a blastopore blastopore all right so this blastopore is a pit all right where this pit is present in the side of embryo we can find a pit called as blastopore all right from this blastopore dear students you know this blastopores in embryo will develop into mouth directly in case of protostomes all right the same blastopores which are present all right 
see now let us say we have here next important aspect that is let us discuss here about the duty row so here what do we mean by duty row second all right and stoma here also means to say mouth okay here in case of deuterostomes the blastopore okay which is a pit in the embryo it which is present at the side of embryo will directly develop into all right will directly develop into anal opening all right so it develops into anal opening in case of deuterostomes the blastopore in case of proteostoma organisms develop into the mouth okay so now the question is enterocoelom is found in all right so under protostomes as i said you before okay we can find uh, different types of in primitive invertebrates like for example you know uh, like porifera and ciliates all those okay in deuterostomes two are included chordates and echinoderms all right so now enterocoelom okay can be seen in deuterostomes dear students all right so which is a true body cavity part of the true body cavity all right can be seen in deuterostomes where there is a you know blastopore developing directly into anal opening go for option 2 option 2 is the right answer here dear students let us go for the next question triploblastic animals primarily shows okay so triploblastic animal animals here refers to the animals which possess all the three primary germ layers that is outer all right ectoderm middle all right then mesoderm and then we have inner endoderm all right so these three layers outer ectoderm middle mesoderm and inner endoderm if they are present those animals are referred to as triploblastic animals okay uh, higher invertebrates show this characteristic okay as well as it can be seen in higher animal phylums as well okay so now let us understand triploblastic animals first option what they have given radial symmetry if the body can be divided into two equal halves from the plane passing through the center in any direction that we call it to as radial symmetry okay so generally it is not shown by triploblastic animals it is shown by diploblastic animals okay so what are diploblastic animals here see diploblastic animals are the animals where we can find only two layers all right so outer ectoderm and inner endoderm mesoderm is absent in those organisms all right now let us say bilateral symmetry see what bilateral symmetry means the organisms can be divided into two equal halves from a single plane passing through the center it is an important characteristic which is present in almost all the triploblastic animals okay which possess ectoderm mesoderm and the endoderm sexual dimorphism see in not all organisms we can find sexual dimorphism that means through you know uh, you know morphologically you know we can find all right the uh, you know the feminine or the masculine characters okay we can identify the organism as male or female uh, easily okay so that is sexual dimorphism morphologically all right true coelom so true body cavity is also you know certain times may not be present in all the triploblastic animals okay but all the triploblastic animals shows one character okay that is they possess bilateral symmetry so please go for option 2 option 2 is the right and dear students 20th question we have is animals which regulate their body temperature are called four options have been given here warm blooded homeothermic endothermic and all of the above so when we take this into consideration first of all let me tell you that warm blooded and homeotherms are almost mean the same okay so 
see here all these three in fact because they can regulate their body temperature internal body temperature they can regulate and it does not change according to the environment where they move all right so it uh, remains you know constant so they have the ability of regulation of their body temperature see animals which regulate their body temperature are all these three warm blooded or homeothermic or endothermic see endothermic animals now for example even mammals are endothermic see which have the ability to or capability to generate heat in the body all right all right to maintain the constant temperature all right so all these three have the ability to regulate their body temperature okay go for the option 4 next question we have is triploblastic organization and bilateral symmetry starts from which phylum during evolution okay so when we consider the evolution all right we can see triploblastic and bilateral symmetry starting from platyhelminthes organisms all right so let me tell you the poriferans you know they are not triploblastic they are diploblastic organisms all right that means they possess outer layer called as body layer or body wall called as pinacoderm this is the outer layer all right and the inner we have is coanoderm all right only these two body walls can be there okay so these are triploblast and uh, sorry they are the, these are not triploblastic animals they are diploblastic in nature and they don't show bilateral symmetry they generally show asymmetry okay next moving on to the second option okay we have here coelenterates all right the coelenterates generally are again primitive invertebrates all right they are very primitive all right after poriferans they are placed okay in the evolutionary order so let me tell you they show in fact generally they have radial symmetry and they are also diploblastic organisms all right that means their in fact body has only two layers their body layers are called as the outer all right ectoderm and inner endo the only these two layers are present okay so this option is wrong okay as i already told you platyhelminthes are the organisms which from where triploblastic organization and bilateral symmetry both these characteristics start see ascelminthes see they are in fact having both you know these characters but before ascelminthes platyhelminthes according to the evolution platyhelminthes come first so in case of platyel minthes that also went early flattened organisms we can find both these characters that is triploblastic organization that is having a outer ectoderm middle mesoderm and inner endoderm and the body getting divided into two equal halves from the plane passing through the center okay so go for option 4 animals in which anus is formed by blastopore are see already we discussed in the previous question okay questions in fact rather in the i think question number 18 we had discussed about the blastopore okay let me tell you the blastopore is a pit all right or okay we can also say it as the first opening all right which can be seen with respect to the embryo all right that is what we call blastopore all right so from this blastopore the on first opening which is from the embryo where anus is formed these type of organisms are generally referred to as deuterostomes see deuterostomes uh, you know include a higher uh, classes okay sorry higher phylums so let us say for example echinoderms and chordates we deuterostomes have okay firstly echinoderms all right and to go with that 
chordates all right these two are included under the deuterostomes where blastopore directly develops into anus in case of protostomes the blastopore develops into what we call <coughs> the mouth directly into mouth so this can be seen in primitive invertebrates but deuterostome is generally seen in chordates and echinoderms so here the answer for 22nd please go for 2 that is deuterostomes next question we have is which of the following is poikilothermic all right here poikilothermic refers to all right cold blooded all right or ectothermic animals or ectotherms all right so let me tell you in here in this case we can find that see the organism can is in fact you know body have a body temperature that varies or that fluctuates according to the temperature of the surroundings or according to the environment where the organism moves all right so if that is the case we call that as poikilothermic or cold blooded animals or ectotherms so examples are here you know you can give fishes you can give amphibians as well as you can give reptiles all right so let me tell you the answer for this question we can go for the fourth that is all of the above fishes amphibians and reptiles all these organisms are poikilothermic or cold blooded organisms nectons are okay we are talking here with reference to nectons all right let me tell you that these nectons okay first of all uh, are the you know actively swimming organism they have the ability of active swimming okay so they are actively swimming all right animals rather or organisms in a body of water i have already discussed about this like say for example fish we have or squid all right or let me tell you we have octopus or even sharks all right children okay even marine mammals as well all right marine mammals all these organisms are nectons they are you know you know freely actively swimming organisms in a body of water okay so the question given here is nectons are four options have been given suspended organism suspended here refers to the act of temporary stoppage temporary stoppage yes you know they do have active swimming but they are suspended organisms because they have temporary stoppage all right they are not the floating plant so eliminate option 2 they are uh, they have the ability to swim okay actively in water so let us go for option 1 and 3 which is the right answer in which group of animals a closed circulatory system is present okay so let me tell you what do we mean by closed circulatory system a circulatory system which is provided with blood vessels all right and inside the blood vessel that is the arteries veins and capillaries all right that is the arteries all right veins and we have capillaries all right so here through this blood vessels the you know inside these blood vessels the blood flows if that is the case then we call that as closed circulatory system So out of these four options one option has a closed circulatory system other three does not have okay let us discuss each option now okay so here first option is arthropoda all right so here they have open circulatory system all right they have open circulatory system what do we mean by open circulatory system here 
you know the blood is pumped into a cavity called body cavity called hemocil all right so it is pumped into the hemocil all right so this hemocil in fact surrounds all the organs of the body all right so this is what we can find all right secondly let me talk about the mollusca so here with respect to mollusca let me tell you that except the class cephalopoda all right all the other you know organisms have open circulatory system all the other molluscans have open circulatory system so remember so here also the blood you know uh, in fact is pumped into the body cavity is called hemocil all right so in case of molluscans all right let me tell you the blood is not contained entirely in blood vessels all right so it flows in the body cavity so we cannot say this is a having a true closed circulatory system so let us eliminate option 2 as well next we have option 3 that is hemichordata all right see hemichordates also have all right open circulatory system all right so which is a connecting link between vertebrates and non vertebrates so they also have open circulatory system okay so then the only organisms where we can find the blood clearly flowing in the the blood vessels inside the blood vessels are here among the given options is annelid okay or the organisms uh, are called annelids or the option is here phylum itself so annelida go for option 4 